Welcome back to Toll Racing. We're back on the safari wagon today and we are going to fix a problem that I put into this thing from the very beginning. We have zero caster right now and the reason for that is the U-joint's bottomed out. So I had to rotate the, rotate the pinion up so that the U-joint wouldn't bottom out as early and then put limit straps on it so the, full, the front end won't droop at full droop uh, due to the U-joint's bottoming out. The problem is other than the U-joints bottoming out, we need more pinion. Uh, we need to raise the pinion up, uh, is that I'm already at zero degrees now on my caster. Uh, and that's undrivable on the street. And we need it to be drivable on the street because we have some tuning we need to do or some diagnostics we need to do. Uh, and we need to be able to drive it on the street to do it so that we're not doing all this on the dyno. Uh, plus, I'd like to be able to drive the thing on the street. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to adjust it so we have perfect pinion angle uh, and then we're going to go ahead and disassemble it, uh, disassemble the axle, take wheels, knuckles and everything off of it, uh, cut our outer seas off, rotate them around, get our caster back that way uh, and weld them back on and put it back together. Um, so. Before we paint it though, so the next episode out, we'll be putting on our sway bars, uh, and these are a TK1 sway bar, it's like an Ultra 4 style sway bar, and it will still allow it full flex, hopefully, um, otherwise, otherwise we'll have to make some adjustments, but it should still allow full flex of the suspension articulation, uh, but it will keep us from dragging door handles and stuff when we try to take a high speed turn, uh, or potentially rolling it and scraping the roof all up. So anyway, let's get going on it, uh, I am not looking forward to this. Not even a little bit, but it should be entertaining for you guys to watch.
All right, what you saw me just throw at it was just the metal dust that we just created from grinding it. Um, and that will actually stick to the seam between the two parts, between the C and the axle tube. Uh, and that way you can identify whether you're at it or not. Uh, so when you start grinding on these, uh, go into the C about 3 sixteenths of an inch. Don't just start taking the weld off. Just go ahead and start about 3 sixteenths of an inch into the C and then go straight in towards the axle tube. You don't need to go any deeper than the tube itself. Uh, it, there's no prep on the tube, but there was a prep on the C. That's why we're going in uh, into the C about 3 sixteenths of an inch. And that just uh, avoids you from having to go in at an angle into the C, especially in my situation where I have parts in the way up top anyway. Uh, and it's a lot easier to grind them that way. But if you have a mag tester, you could also do it that way, but it does work just to throw the dust at it uh, and then just kind of give it a light blow and uh, it will just stick to the seam. But that's pretty good. So it, it, it's looking like we got about 6.6 6, 6 degrees. Uh, and that's not so bad. And it should read the same if we go on this side. This is a, it's 90 is this, so it's going to be 85 both, both directions, or 83 point. Should be 83.4 for both directions. So, and we pretty, we are. 6.6 so, um, is our magic number. That's what we're going to try to hit uh, on the other side. All right, here's how my day is going. Uh, I just swapped this out with a new cylinder and the cylinder, whoever filled it didn't shut it all the way. Uh, so there's no more gas in it, it's completely empty. <laughs> so that's how, that's how my day is going. So now I have no gas. So uh, this one was pretty much empty. Uh, I'm, I'm not even gonna try welding because I don't wanna have to grind out porosity uh, with it because it doesn't even read on the gauge. And I only have two argon CO2 mixes. So unfortunately, we don't get to weld this, so now I gotta wait uh, until next week. Okay, so before we go and weld this, there's a couple things we, we want to double check first. Um, one, uh, if you're just gonna rotate it around like I did, you have to make sure that it didn't start coming out towards you. Uh, and that will happen sometimes depending on how well you ground it. Uh, it may actually kind of like cam out. Uh, towards you. 
Um, two, you obviously want to double check that your alignment is where you want it uh, and that it's going to be within range. So remember, we put this, I put this at six and a half degrees, which six degrees is about, um, three degrees would be like bare, absolute bare minimum. Uh, six degrees is probably getting into the ideal range uh, and then 10 degrees is probably about the opposite of six degrees. So you're, you're, you're getting to the point where you're just about going to be coming out of the ideal range and going too far in. Uh, whatever it is, you want them to match on either side. Uh, you don't want it just because it's in an ideal range, make this one six and that one 10. Uh, that's, not, that's not close enough. Uh, try to get it exactly. I mean, obviously there's gonna be discrepancy uh, in your all thread or whatever you got going on through here and stuff. So uh, I know, so six is the bottom. Um, and I know that I have, and it's kind of hard to see with my brake caliper there, but I have my drive line pretty much going straight in. Uh, so it's, it's the pinion and the drive line are going perfectly straight. Um, and so I know that I'm never going to go like this. So that's why I want to keep this at six. Uh, because as I increase this back with my four link arms, it's going to increase my, my caster so that, that that'll go up. Um, but it will then make my pinion angle go down this way, which, which is okay. It's better to go this way. You don't really ever want to go that way. There's no reason for it. And not that it would matter if you have a double cardian. Um, but you may start running it into stuff and then you start running into lubrication problems and stuff on your pinion and everything else, putting it up higher than it needed to be. So that being said, um, I am good to go. So I'm six and a half. I got that right where I want it. Why am I six and a half and not six? And that's because I went past it and I don't want to bound it back. Um, so I'm just going to make the other side the same. I may end up having to pound that one back if I go too far. Um, it is what it is. Uh, so I'm good to go. I'm going to weld it. So what I'm going to do, uh, instead of, I'm going to weld it like, or heat it like I'm going to rotate some more. Uh, and the reason behind that is I want to heat this more than I heat the axle tube. The axle tube obviously is going to get hot, um, but it's not going to, I want to try to get this hotter than the axle tube. And that's because as everything shrinks and cools down, I want this to compress around the axle tube. I don't want the axle tube to maybe shrink more than this or that will cause the weld to crack. So I want to err on the side of this being hotter than the axle tube. Um, that, and this is like a nodular iron, so it's going to shrink at a different rate anyway uh, than, than the tube, which is probably 1018 or something like that. Um, so, so anyway, so that's how we're going to heat it and that's how we're going to weld it. So let's get doing that now. I'm using 035. I'm just going to use mild steel. Um, it is not a bad idea to do stainless. If you wanted to do stainless, like a 312, kind of a higher number, uh, 300 series, 309, 312, something like that would be good. Um, but if you do that, remember you have to run argon gas, not, uh, not the CO2 argon mix. So, um, let's get going.
Okay, so you just saw the pin I pointed to, and now go ahead and put that on there, the pin pointing out uh, to the outside of the vehicle. Uh, then tighten that on there. Make sure that you're all the way engaged on those because if you slip, you could break that pin off. Um, now you can see the pin. It's about 2 o'clock on there. And put your washer on so that has the keyway and then all those holes. Uh, that pin should go in one of the holes. If it doesn't go in the hole, flip it over uh, and maybe you'll get lucky like I just did. Uh, if it doesn't fit yet, just keep backing that off, nut off until you can get it in one of the holes. So don't tighten it anymore. Just, just go backwards until you get it in there. And then that is the lock nut. So you'll tighten that down uh, and you'll jam everything together.
While I wait for that to cool down, I got some new screws for these. They were getting a little worn. Those are 1024, in case you're curious and want to change yours out. Okay, so when you're putting these on and adjusting them, uh, I use a spring tool to turn it uh, and just hit the leading side of the split in that in that case with the spring tool. Uh, that way it's closing the gap and making the, the sleeve smaller as you're knocking it around. If you try to hit the opposite side of that, it'll be making it bigger, so it'll make it even harder to spin. Uh, and then you're just taking out the play in that uh, in the spindle. So, so put your spindle up in it, uh, figure out where it's wiggling. Is it wiggling on the bottom? Is it wiggling on the top? Uh, and then adjust that nut either to bring the spindle up or down so that both the ball joints are making contact at the exact same time. Alright, so uh, here it is again, in case you missed it on the last one, this is that little pin and the lock ring, so that only fits on there one way. It's really hard to do with leather gloves on, so keep those off. Uh, and then just line up the pin, just make sure that little pin is inside the washer. I cannot tell you the amount of these things I've taken apart uh, that this step has gotten so, um, messed up. All right, on these Chevy calipers, watch the O-ring that comes at, in there. That keeps the caliper from rattling. Every once in a while, when you go to assemble it, that O-ring will push out of there, uh, and then you'll have a rattle, rattly caliper. So just watch those. All right, and that just about wraps it up for this episode. So there's the knuckles. They're turned. Uh, it doesn't really look any different. You'd have to really study it to see that I did anything. Um, but it, it worked out, and now we're in an adjustable range, and we actually have some casters, so this thing should behave quite a bit better on the pavement now. Um, so next up, video out is going to be sway bars, and uh, don't let me forget that I need to put oil in this thing before I go and drive it. I drained it out. Um, and then you also, now that we have this thing pivoted up, uh, the pinion up, I, I have to, I'm going to fill it to the upper hole on my front cover, and that would be technically for a high pinion diff, but that'll get the fluid levels to where my front pinion bearing will be in the, in the oil again. So you're going to have to run, increase your oil capacity if you rotate the axle like we just did, uh, so that that pinion bearing is under oil. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you again real soon. Uh, next episode out will be sway bars, front and rear on this thing.